blessed are you as you weep on your knees. When uh, we uh, thought about the acting section of the play, and I think we knew we wanted it to cover the life and ministry of Jesus, his death, and his resurrection. We knew we wanted some key parts uh, in the acting, like the communion and um, the prediction of Peter's denial and Peter's denial, and um, where Jesus says, I am to the soldiers. And um, so those were some things where, that we really made a point of having in there. And then um, just as we read through, um, to other things that would stand out to us. And try to make it um, word for word out of the Bible, yeah, because that's where the power is, is in God's word. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. We weren't from the beginning going to do really any set design to speak of. Um, partially from a financial standpoint and also just a logistics in uh, moving things around. Um, also, um, we weren't going to do many props. Uh, Costume-wise, we had uh, thought, I, I think initially in our mind we were thinking back to probably vacation Bible school type costumes and, and the like. But what uh, happened as we went along is, is Megan um, came on board to help with the costumes and came up with an idea that has just really worked out uh, well, really well, mm -hmm. uh, it, because it gives the feel of the Bible Times costumes without wearing the bed sheets, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that drape over you. So they're, they're casual, modern clothes with long scarves that hang down to, to uh, um, make each actor unique and stand out in a unique way. And we want other people to just kind of blend in. That way we get the storyline going. We want the story to follow verbally where it's going, uh, like acting and singing. So we can pass that around if you guys want a good idea. Um, he's just got, you know, just a really good flow to everything with the scarf and the shirt and the pants and everything. Joanna, um, for the women, joined us stand up. And she simply got it like going too. Where we just have very loose, you know, and she'll end up having a head wrap. Some women might not have head wraps. I don't think my, my person does, and Sarah's head wrap might be a little bit different than Julian's. Than but you can see her colors are a little bit brighter, just so we can pick her out of the crowd when everything's going on. And um, just that we have those key people. So when it came time for uh, actors, we, uh, like we talked, we initially were thinking of Ryan to play Jesus, and that shifted to Brian Schmatter. And the neat thing about that is he played baby Jesus when he was an infant in a play at our church, and now he's a grown man, and he's playing Jesus, so he's come, he's come full circle, and he's doing a great job, oh, too, yeah. uh, memorizing the lines, but really getting into the the part and it's it got to be a really difficult role to play but he's doing a really good job with that and has worked really hard it's obvious I'm trying to project my own emotion into what i think would have been something similar to resemble jesus's emotion at that time um, is was pretty was almost a learning experience in and of itself Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. It, it's pretty cool just kind of getting to know guys better, especially like the guys that played my disciples. And, you know, I was around them a lot, and so it was, it, was, it was fun. One of the actors that we were kind of struggling to, or the characters that we were struggling to find an actor for was Peter because you really need a, um, an outgoing person who's willing to put their all into the character because it's an emotional character. Shall we strike with a sword? No, put your sword in its place. It's been really fun working with the whole crew, everybody here in, the, in our church family. And uh, it's really the energy we get off of everybody coming together and encouraging each other. Uh, that's, been, that's been way fun. We 
we needed the angel Gabriel and um, uh, Gary Jacobs has just um, a ton, again, a fabulous job with this role. And so he's grown a lot in projection and putting himself into the part. And you can tell uh, it, it, it's, it's powerful because it affects him as he's saying the lines. Mm -hmm. And as it affects him, it affects us yeah. to see that. Yeah. The Holy One that is to be born shall be called the Son of God. It, working with everyone has been fantastic. Uh, I was advised to try and get into the mind of the character we all were. But when your task is trying to get into the mind of an archangel, it definitely goes to the top of the to-do list. And it's not an easy thing to do for a sinner like me, but I, I've done my best. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. Rick Rhetoric, he, he came on, first of all, he was the the, I think he's the only one that was willing to play Judas Iscariot. He volunteered, uh, we didn't ask yeah, him. Yeah, he volunteered. We, we, did, we didn't go, you'd make a perfect Judas Iscariot. But then he found out that there was no speaking role in there, so he suggested Caiaphas. Worked with me. Yeah, okay. The most memorable part is actually just seeing how this has all gone together. It's just been amazing. And he and I in the, part, in, in the play are partners. We're the accusers. We're the bad guys, so everything else has been sweetness and light, and then we come along and mess up the whole story. Yeah, my most, I think I really like the way it's come together, the whole, the whole story. He is deserving of death! Yes, yes death! Pontius Pilate was one that uh, was a role that we asked George Woolett to play. But he has done a fabulous job. He's uh, again thrown himself into the character and is very convincing as uh, Pontius Pilate. Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you and the power to release you? You can have no power against me at all, unless it were given to you from above. Therefore, he has delivered me to you as the greater sin. At the very beginning, um, as uh, reading the part about Pontius Pilate, it made me go into the Bible and look at his role and how he, how it was described in the different Gospels. And so uh, that was kind of a, that was a good part for me. At one point uh, during our search for actors and as, the, uh, as time was passing on, we made an announcement at church and asked if um, anybody wanted to be involved with it. We got a number of ladies that wanted to be involved. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's not hardly any roles at all for there ladies. Like three or four, <laughs> I think. Uh -huh. And so um, we we are able to use them uh, for uh, camera operator. Mm -hmm. um, we're using in sound and uh, script prompter, and that's been it's been really good to have have them uh, um, be part of that. Um, I assist the actors uh, if they. Are hesitate, they've dropped a line or can't think of a line, I look at their faces and they're they're looking a little nervous and then so that I come up with the line real quick. And it's not easy because I'm sitting down and they're up there. And so I'm trying to not <laughs> distract people and I have to stay a word ahead of them. I have to stay a line ahead of them. So <laughs> it's challenging. It's so awesome. It's like this little this little church in this little town doing this huge thing and all for God's glory. But we were able to gain some other um, actors uh, for that in uh, smaller but yet still important roles and every mm -hmm. role is important. And so all of the roles have been filled by great people, filling out the disciples, um, the soldiers that come into the garden Caiaphas's court with the uh, Jewel Nickerson playing the religious leader who has such a, a presence um, like he was uh, uh, made for the theater has, has uh, just really brought a certain a certain uh, feel to the pr production. I think I've learned a little bit more about what actually happened uh, in the, uh, the upper room and then I think that's a uh, it's a moving experience for me. Looking in scripture, 
Uh, I'm also doing a little bit of research on Thomas because I'm a reasonably new Christian. So it's uh, it's kind of fun to, to look that up and find out more what's going on. Well, I think in the story part, it's that Jesus experienced, you know, being a man, being human, if you would, and had to deal with that. And then we saw how he, you know, was confronted, but yet he, he kept his cool, if you would. He uh, withstood the pressures and the, the questioning. At the same time, we also saw how he rose above it and how we could celebrate that everything uh, came out with the right end of the story. Falling down? That was really convincing. I'm watching everybody, all the dancers and all the singers, how great they did. I don't have like one of the major roles, so... Um, but it's been really enjoyable working with everyone. This is one of the things that, that we had thought of from the beginning with Peter's denial is we wanted to create a, a uh, kind of a ping pong scene where it would shift from Jesus before Caiaphas to Peter with the servants at the denial. And we uh, had thought about that and thought the only way we really could pull it off is if we had the right lighting to be able to shift from scene to scene. And so we worked on getting the script written right and the lighting worked out and the music that goes with it worked out and also the sound effects that go with it too to try and create that that uh, ping pong scene of what's taking place at the same time at Caiaphas's courtyard and we wanted it to end with that that powerful passage in Luke where it says when Peter denied him the third time that Jesus turned and looked at Peter and Peter went out and wept bitterly. And that was something we really wanted to capture the emotion on that and the, the look that we feel Jesus would have given, not a look of condemnation, but a look of compassion because Jesus had foretold what was going to happen. He knew Peter was going to deny him. And I've imagined that. What is it like, you know, when I've sinned and Jesus is looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and it's just, I can't get through that scene. I can't get through it. It's just so precious and so personal to me. And like you said, I think it's in Luke, when you've returned, strengthen your brethren. And so he knew he would come back. He prayed for his faith to not fail. And so uh, that scene, uh, again, between Don and Brian, is a really powerful scene. Mm -hmm. All the background music is done by my dad, and he's doing an awesome job. I tend to be kind of biased, but he has done so good, especially in that scene between um, Peter and the servants in the courtyard and Jesus and Caiaphas, just the way he's picked out themes and it, the music really moves with the tone of what's happening. Everyone's done a really great job of getting into their character and doing more than just reciting lines. They've, you know, watching the disciples um, and the people with Caiaphas, you know, they just, they react to, to things that are said. It's not just, you said your line, okay, I'm going to say my line. It's like they really are understanding what is happening and who they are in the production. So that, that's really neat. Mm -hmm. It really is.